Hi, I'm Dawn Cavanaugh, APQS Education Director. I love my APQS long arm. It allows me to quilt beautiful designs, have a lot of fun with free hand as well as computer work. But you know, it can also do some fun things that you might not normally think of for a long arm. Today I'm going to show you how to use your long arm to do something that you're used to using and doing simply by hand, and that is tying a quilt. I know, you're thinking about, well, sure, you can go ahead and load it up on the frame and still use a needle and a thread or yarn and try and poke it through all the layers. Well, yes, you sure could do that, but I'm going to show you how to use your long arm to actually tack the yarn and all of the layers so that it looks like you went to all that work to tie them with a needle and yarn, but not have to go to all of that extra work using a pliers to pull it through rubber fingertips and making your hands sore and bleeding. It's very simple to do. Let me show you how. Before we dive into tying the quilt, I wanted to visit just a moment or two about the kind of foot that you are going to have on your machine and what might be a little bit better. This is a standard foot that comes on the APQS long arm quilting machines. It's got a straight edge, and nice tall edges all the way around so that you can use rulers 360 degrees around the foot. Really works great for that technique. But it's got an actual flat or straight bottom. What we're going to do is move this foot over the top of our couching material, like yarn or ribbon. And this foot, though it's possible, can sometimes catch on that yarn. So one option is to switch to the beveled foot. This is an open toe. You notice that it's a little shorter, so it's not really designed to be used for rulers. But the bottom, see if I can get the camera to focus just right. The bottom has a little bit of a bevel, so that's going to slide up and over our, our actual yarn, whatever we're going to use to tie the quilt. Another option would be the APQS scoop foot. That foot has high edges so that you can slide right over the material. You might be wondering, why would I bother tying a quilt when I can just quilt it? Well, sometimes the material that you're working on can be difficult to actually quilt through. It might have lots of bulky seams, for example. Uh, the quilt I'm working on today is a denim quilt. It's one that I've been uh, planning on for a long time, saving up my ratty, torn up jeans and my children's jeans, and finally decided it's time to dive into those, especially with winter coming on. I think it would be a, a great, nice, warm quilt to even keep in the back of the car in case that someone has car trouble and so forth to bring that out and stay cozy and warm. A uh, t-shirt quilt might be another example when you've got lots of different t-shirts or lots of bulk here and you're trying to decide what you want it to do from a thread's perspective. Well, maybe tying is the answer. Tying is also very quick, even quicker than quilting. I'm gonna grab the yarn and show you what the denim quilt looks like so that you can get an idea of where we're gonna place our, our ties along with how we're going to do it. I've already got my denim quilt loaded on the frame. I've, I've pinned the batting and the backing directly to the pickup roller, but the edge of the quilt top I basted it along after using the, uh, the Lucy channel lock. I used the channel lock to stitch a nice straight edge to keep the machine nice and straight, and then basted the quilt top along that edge. If you look carefully, you can see that even though I pressed my seams open in many parts for a lot of fun and actually to conserve fabric, I left some of the seams that were part of the denim jeans intact, including felled seams, as you see here, along with a pocket for fun and interest. I've also chosen a fun, thick, soft yarn. This Bernay yarn is made for blankets, but it reminds me of a soft, fuzzy, a really lightweight couching thread. So I won't even need to tie a knot when I'm finished. We'll be using this yarn to simulate what a tied quilt will look like. Imagine how hard it would be to pull a couple of layers through this, through all of these layers. That's why it's super simple and fun to do this tying technique. Well, of course, with tying a quilt, one of the reasons people tie it is to actually avoid intersections or to put the ties right at corners. To make my life a little easier, I'm actually just going to place them about six inches across all the way along the length of the quilt. And then I'll come down another six inches and then offset them so that they'll be staggered across my surface just for fun. I just got regular old plain chalk and I used uh, a traditional 24 inch ruler 
and marked that ruler with some uh, ruler marking tape. You could certainly use washi tape or anything that's handy, even painter's tape, so that you can do this really quickly and painlessly. So with my chalk, I'm just going to put a few dots right where I want those ties to be all the way along the edge of the quilt. This way I can also adjust if it looks like I'm going to hit any one of my seams and slightly make a change without it being noticeable. I just love light bulb moments. After I marked the first row, I realized if I put my tape on each side of this ruler, I can quickly mark both rows at the same time. This ruler happens to be a three and a half inch ruler. So instead, if I want my marks to be three and a half, I can simply mark it as is. I'm using three inch marks, so after I've marked the top row, I'm just sliding it up slightly to mark the next row. That's a slap your forehead type of a moment. Well, it looks like my quilt has chicken pox, but I've got all the reference marks made along the surface and where the tacking stitches are going to go. I'm going to start on the left side of the quilt and plan my stitching strategy. Basically, I'm going to zigzag my way all the way down and then jump over and catch these all the way back. That way I'll be able to tack the entire throat space area all in one pass. Though you can do this technique with your stitch regulator turned on, I'm going to show you how to turn off the stitch regulator and use the manual sewing mode. On Lucy, the stitch regulator is on when the blue light is on. That's also uh, applicable to Lenny. Just turn the stitch regulator off by pushing that button and you'll see that there is no blue light now indicating that we're in constant speed or manual sewing mode. We'll adjust the speed of that constant sewing motor to suit your abilities. Depends on whether you like the machine to move a little quicker or a little slower. We'll have to experiment to find the right speed for you. On the APQS Freddy or Millie, Turn off the stitch regulator by pressing the letter S, the stitch regulator button. That'll disable the stitch regulator. And then adjust the constant speed of the sewing motor using the up or down arrows here. More or less stitches means more motor speed or less motor speed when you've got the stitch regulator disengaged. I've tossed the ball of yarn to the other end of the quilt and pulled out several feet of yarn. The way this is going to work is that we're actually going to slide the yarn under the foot and then using the machine in its manual sewing mode, we're going to smooth and stitch over the top of it several times using close tiny stitches. Those tiny stitches will act like locking stitches so that we can simply stop, turn off the sewing motor, and then drag the machine to the next dot where we will repeat the same thing. The yarn will drag from this spot to the next spot to the next spot, along with the bobbin thread. So we will have those to trim when we're finished. Once we've made it all the way across the quilt, we can either snip them now while we've got it stretched on the frame or snip them later. I'll show you how to do that and make that really quick and easy. So I'm going to actually, I'm over the top of my dot, I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread. I've got a flannel on the back so this quilt is extra fluffy and soft. I am going to take a few tap locking stitches using the needle up and down button. That's going to make sure that the yarn doesn't come out or my starting and stopping tacking thread. I'm going to slide that yarn underneath. I'm going to experiment with my motor speed, see what that feels like here. Let's see. pretty good. Actually, you, as I move the machine back and forth across that area, we've now tacked that yarn securely in place. Oh, four or five passes, depending on how quickly you move the machine, should be more than enough to secure it through all three of the layers. I'm going to jump and zigzag down now all the way to the bottom. Zigzag here. This one's right at an intersection. I might fudge that a little bit. And to the next one.
jump over that seam. to keep my right hand out of the way of the camera. <laughs> Normally I'd be driving with the right and potentially holding this yarn with my left hand here. Here we go. So as you can see this is really fast and quick. We're going to have this whole section done in a matter of minutes. I'll finish it up and then show you how I'm going to come back and just trim those threads all to the same equal height. I've reached the other end of the quilt and you can see my little chevron pattern happening as I zigged and zagged my way across. By now you've figured out that the yarn is actually just for decoration because what's really holding those quilt layers together is the tacking stitch. We want those stitches to be really, really teeny tiny as you scribble or zigzag across the area where you're putting your tacking stitches. The kind that you pull your hair out trying to take out if they actually got in there by mistake. That's why it's so handy to use the manual sewing mode. If you're going to use the stitch regulator, then make sure that you use the tiniest setting for stitches so they're very close, up to 15 stitches per inch. As I move from one tacking position to the next, I simply pulled the yarn along with me so it was dragging from one spot to the other. But along with that, the top thread is also dragging. Let's see if I can actually find it here. Here it is. Here's the top thread. Remember that the bobbin thread is also dragging from spot to spot at the same time. So when we're all done, I'll simply flip the quilt over and trim all of those traveling threads and that bobbin thread will be flush with the back of the quilt. Since we're trying to pull off the illusion that we actually tied the quilt, the next step is to trim each of these so that it looks like the normal one or one and a half inches, whatever you like, uh, leftover tails as if someone had actually tied a knot there and uh, done the traditional hand tying. So I'm going to speed things up by using a nice sharp scissors and first go about halfway between all of my zigs and my zags cutting both the top traveling thread and the yarn bet you can figure out what's going to happen next. With each one of these, all I need to do is pull up those little tails. I like to just hold my finger underneath and then trim to give them that nice haircut so they're all consistent. I'm going to get this quilt done and show you what it looks like. It's all done. Take a look. We have a few little fuzzies to take care of because the yarn left some remnants behind. A good shake outside should take care of that. And remember, I still have to trim the traveling threads along the back. So a couple of tips that I'm going to share with you. Full disclosure, as I was working on the project here, I found out that the yarn wasn't as strong as I thought in some cases because I must have just pierced it with the needle. So as I was tying the, or actually cutting the yarn, a couple of pieces broke off. The slick way to fix that was to simply lay another piece of yarn right over the top and stitch that one down. Because remember, this is just an illusion. It's not really what's holding our quilt together. It's the tacking stitch. So that took care of any of those oopses. I had about four or five of those to, to patch up as I went along. Now, I did switch to a slightly larger needle than is common with an APQS machine. When you receive it brand new, it comes with a size 4.0 needle, which is like a size 18. I went up one step to a 4.5, which is like a 19 slash 20. Not because the yarn was going through the needle. The thread I was using on the top was a 50 weight so fine thread and traditional bobbin weight, 60 weight pre-wound bobbins in the bobbin. But I used that thicker needle because of the material I was actually stitching through. I've got denim plus some denim bulky seams and a polyester batting along with flannel backing. So I wanted to make sure as I was moving that needle back and forth in the manual sewing mode, it wasn't flexing too much and risking breaking the needle. So one last tip, I chose to use a polyester batting with this jeans quilt to help give some loft to some of these seams so they wouldn't feel rough or bumpy on the bottom. But of course now this is a very heavy quilt. 
So keep that in mind when you're doing anything like um, um, tying, that the stitches also, the ties rather, need to be the same distance apart that the batting calls for if you were traditionally hand quilting or machine quilting it. In this case, it said it needed to be around five to six inches apart. So as you see, as I, I place my hand here, that's about a four to five inch placement, which should be good to go to make sure it doesn't come apart. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this cool technique and will be able to put it to good use on your quilting projects. It's super simple and, and actually fun and very quick to do. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and check us out on our APQS YouTube channel where we have lots of helpful tips and videos to help you with your long arm quilting. Our website is apqs.com. See you next time.